there, my name's Jill Tiny, I'm from Collaboration Global, and this is our podcast, Being Human, Hidden Depths. I'm going to be interviewing some of our members from Collaboration Global, and they're going to be sharing with you their extraordinary lives. Although they would probably believe they're just normal, everyday, average humans, but they are extraordinary. A bit like you and me, we all have our story to tell. We've all been through difficult times and we've come out the other end having learned an extraordinary amount about ourselves that we can share with others. So I think you'll find lots of things that will resonate with where you've been in your journey as well. I look forward to seeing you on the other side. And we're off and welcome to Being Human Hidden Depths with me, Jill Tiny, and my very special guest star. I'm going to take my glasses off so I can see him more clearly. Jonathan Holton, welcome to Being Human. How are you, Jonathan? I'm feeling very human today, Jill. Thanks very much. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Pinch myself and I know it's happening. Yeah, oh, definitely. <laughs> so glad to have you on the call today uh, because um, we have only known each other relatively recently. Yeah, we are. And, and yet, there's kind of tangible magic yeah. happening and instantly we were attracted to each other, thankfully due to an introduction by a wonderful man called Mark Lader. Yes. Um, and I thought it would be wonderful to kind of explore that. What happened there? How did that, when did we, cause it feels like, and I know many people have said this to friendships and uh, business partnerships in the past. Sure. It feels like I've known you forever. I know it really does. Doesn't it? It really does. Yeah. So, I, you know what? I, I'll be honest with you. I think sometimes, and, and you'll get this, sometimes you meet, you meet people and you just know that it's either not right, it's right, or it'll be a bit indifferent. But to be honest, sometimes when it is right and it just clicks, it just works. And I think that's how it's been um, with us and our relationship. And it's just brilliant and it's just growing and I'm just really excited about it. So to be here today is a real honor. And I believe I'm the second guest. Is that right? Oh, indeed. Yes. <laughs> Goodness me. Couldn't be the first, but at least I'm the second, Jill. The <laughs> well, the first, the first one was a very important topic. We were talking about Black Lives Matter. So it kind of hit my heart. And that's why I thought, yeah. hang on, let's open it up to slightly wider than the collaboration global community. Amazing. Um, but I really want to um, unpack why our connection has happened, because a lot of people rely on intuition and nothing else and I think there are things that we have to put in place and we have put in place whether it's by accident or design that actually is going to ensure and I don't know if you realize this but there is no way our partnership and our relationship going forward is going to fail because of the things that we're going to put into place because of what I have learned through collaboration so I'll be emboldening you with other relationships as we go along but let's go back to the beginning yes let's Let's go back to the very beginning Jonathan Holton from Bolton. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> from Bolton, actually from Bolton, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, Tell us so about you. yeah, so I'll, I'll go back to the uh, to the beginning. I mean, I've I've lived in the northwest of England now for gosh a, a little while. I moved back here three years ago. I was before that a consultant down in the southwest of England. So I lived on the beautiful coastline of Cornwall. Um, I know, I know. And I was a, a TV exec when I was down there, believe it or not. So I traveled the world and filmed documentaries and, you know, built a, an agency, which has now kind of spiraled into where we are now. Yeah, I just had a really exciting life. Um, you know, I've you know, got two great kids, you know, I've got a wonderful partner and life is just fantastic. But uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing the journey that you go on that brings you to where you are. And here I am now sat in Bolton uh, in Horwich, actually. It's a bit posher than Bolton. I love Obviously, Bolton. Yeah. <laughs> Horage, actually, yeah. and, uh, exactly here with you so yeah it's all good life is life is an adventure a journey and um every experience is worth something huge to me you know i take i take value from from every experience the good the bad the ugly i'll always take a bit of experience and i think it helps you become that really well-rounded person and, and hopefully one day that's what i'll become that's what we all become because we're all all aspiring to do something great aren't we absolutely um, and what i like about you is it, it looks like you're 12, um, you know, sort of a very young fit, potentially, you know, just hitting 30, but you've packed so much into your life. Now, I don't want to pry, you know, you to ask a lady her age, but... <laughs> <laughs> How old am I? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's kind of irrelevant. I was thinking about that this morning. It's just a number. It doesn't matter. But you have yeah. packed so much into your life. When you were the eight-year-old, Jonathan... Yeah, yeah. Did you see any of this? Did you kind of have an ambition? Of, when I grow up, I'm going to be a... Yeah. What was in your heart then back then? That's such a good um that's such a good question. I think going right back to the early days. So I was um 
even before that, and, and Jill, you know, I've told you my, my story. And, and when you mentioned Black Lives Matter, I'll, I'll just touch onto that a little bit as well, because I think it's, it's yeah. topical. It's, it's easy for, for us media people to jump on topical issues, but this is an issue that's been here for, for years, Decades, for generations yeah. and yeah. hundreds of years. And, and believe it or not, I was a, an NSPCC child. I was taken, um, unfortunately, my, my parents were very young when they had me, didn't work out. So I was taken by the NSPCC and I was brought up in a Jamaican family uh, for the first few years of my life. And, you know, here I am, the, the white child being brought up by the black family and they, they are blood to me. You know, they really are. Um, and, you know, those issues that you highlighted in your first podcast, so important. And please just keep banging on about it. We have to keep the momentum moving on that movement. It's so important. Yeah. But I think from my experiences as a child, I always had something within me that said, you know, there is something you can do. And, and statistically speaking, children who are adopted normally have really big, high aspirational levels. It's either the extreme of you accept that you've had a really tough upbringing and you're just going to lie down and just let the world run over you, or you go to hell with this. I'm actually going to do something amazing i'm going to impact somebody's life i'm going to help somebody i'm going to i'm going to make the world that i didn't actually have when i was brought into it and and i did have that within me um but to be truthful i think i always had an aspiration to to be a policeman that was always my aspiration oh, yeah. um and uh, i achieved that that's something i did achieve and uh you know, about you <laughs> you didn't yeah so <laughs> Yeah, I know. When I was 20 years of age, uh, I joined the police. I was there for four years, but I felt unfulfilled. It, j there was, it wasn't really grasping me. I, I loved it. I loved helping people. But sometimes, and people watching this may know that there is something inside of you that says, there's more, you know, you can do more, you can make more of a difference. Um, mm. And I decided to take that step, left the police and move forward into the career that I now have. And, and it was the best move I ever made. But at the age of eight, yeah, you know, under 10, I was just going through these identity issues, trying to figure out who on earth was, was this Jonathan? You know, who was I? I was born a different name, changed my name at two years. I was born a Daniel and then I became a Jonathan. Right. And it's like, who are you and what are you all about? And I think really it's only now in my mid thirties, I'm coming, there's my age in my mid thirties that I'm actually really getting to grips with this and accepting, you know, every facet of who I am. And I'm actually going, do you know what? This is a part of the personal brand, which is me and everybody listening and watching this should actually go. Every experience counts for something, take something from it and apply it. So in answer to your question, in short, um, I had an aspiration to be a policeman, achieved that, but there was so much more and that's where it's led me to today. Mm. I love that because um, my journey is um, <clears throat> from a point of frustration because I was not in the police force, but I was a teacher and my yeah. frustration came from not being able to do enough. It's yes. like, I, I can, I can I help this person, I can help this person, but I need to help many, many more. And, and the system would frustrate me as well. I yeah. also worked previously in a previous incarnation in local government. And, the, right. and you would go to work every single day having an argument with somebody because you couldn't please all the people all the time. It was either a tenant who wanted to, you know, couldn't pay their yeah. rent, or it was somebody, uh, your boss was having a go at you, or the council was having a go at you, or the press were having, and it's like, whoa, because... Yeah there must be a better way. So I, I look back and I can join the dots where I've kind of come to this place now where I've worked out the tool for me is collaboration. Sure. The culture is a big part of what we do. So pulling people together to make the world a better place sounds very trite yes. and, and cliche. But ultimately, when you do bring people together, you empower them. You do. And you by do. being empowered, then, then you can, you know, well, what, what can we do? What's possible? Exactly. So that's right. why I see what, what you have um, in the Influencer Academy, which is your current baby. And I'm sure there'll be many, many more going along forward. Yes. But cool. your Influencer Academy, for me, um, gives me an opportunity to enable more and more people to build their personal brand, oh my to gosh, get yes. their heart on their sleeve and get it out there and tell people about it. So you're kind of a stepping stone for me to help many, many more people to make a difference in the world. And I'm, I'm not going to be giving this to people that go, yeah, I want to earn loads of money. I'm going to yeah. give, be giving it to people who are just saying, oh, I've, I've got this, I need to teach people about this. I want to share about this. I've got this on my heart and this is what yeah. I want to there you go, have this you know, training so you can help it. Do you want to give us a, a nutshell of how the Influence Academy came about and, yeah. and where it's going to go? 
I, oh gosh, I'd, I'd love to, I'd love to. So, so really, when I left the police and I went into this world of, of consultancy, so I went into the world of uh, marketing and media consultancy for brands, um, and, and I had no formal training. This is all about my understanding of people, and I've always believed that great marketing comes from a great understanding of people. If you know what people think, if you know how they feel, if you know what motivates them, and you can um, scratch the itch, as I would say, or itch the scratch, I don't know which order you put that in, have a little think about that one. But if you can find <laughs> what works then you can actually sell product you can make a difference you can achieve your goals very easily and there's all sorts of laws of attraction and laws of this and laws of that it's all around the same principle understand people value people treat people as people and not projects and you'll achieve great things mm. so i went into this world and um, managed to build a small agency quite successful um, and then took a massive step to go into media it was a big step up for me to become a media exec and I learned more about people then traveling in the world, filmed all these documentaries, did live TV in front of 950 million connected homes at any one given time, wow. live, no script, no nothing. <laughs> like, There's the deep end, go jump in. Yeah. And um, at the end of that journey, I thought, you know, th there's something missing here and, and people really undervalue themselves. And, and I've done it for years. I've not looked at my, my positive attributes and, you know, mm. so, so often we focus on our weaknesses and trying to perfect our weaknesses. I suggest that we play to our strengths and that we don't look at our non-strengths. I don't even call them weaknesses. I call them non-strengths. Non like you know, let's play to our strengths and, and do something great. So here I was after all of that journey with an agency that I'd built. At one point, we had 32 staff, five offices in three different countries. Damn. And I was so excited about that. But I was finding myself charging great rates. So my day rate at that point, I built to about 5,000 a day just, just for my time. But I was here, there and everywhere. And I realized it was affecting my personal life, you know, in a massive way. I was tired. I was drained. I was snappy. I looked awful. I felt awful. And then I thought, there's more. And, and there are more people out there who want to access, you know, certain skills, certain bits of training, certain knowledge and insights that you can't really get, you know, you, you have to find it online, but it's not there. Mm. So I took all my knowledge and I put it online and I just created these programs and these courses where you listen, you'll be on LinkedIn and you'll have been inundated with people going, I'll generate you leads, I'll generate you sales and you just delete them straight away. Mm. But we genuinely built a model that works. And now I'm actually helping people by taking them and journeying with them, mentoring them on a program globally scaled. Now we've got people in LA, we've got people in Australia, all over the UK and Europe, and we're just building this thing by the day. But one by one, each person going through that program with me, being mentored by me and my team through video-based, learning your own time, fully accredited, by the way, training this now. We're enabling those people to achieve their goals. So essentially, it's compacting all of that and all of my experience into one simple place and people just do it at their leisure. And, and I just want to help people, Jill. At the end of the day, it's about helping people. Of course, we have to put food on the table. But actually, if we can help one person to make a huge difference in the world, then, then tick in the box and I'm happy, you know? Yeah, I, I know. I mean, somebody told me off of saying that once. If I could just help one person, like, but you don't want to help one person. You want to help millions. Okay, yeah, that's a good, good point. <laughs> one at a time. One at <laughs> yeah, a time. it's tough one at a time, isn't it? It is. Um, yeah. So give us an idea. If somebody were to go on this course and say they've, uh, they've been in business for like two, three years and they've, they've got a brand, but then it's not polished enough. And maybe they've got a bit of a personal brand going or their business is them and yeah. they're, they're on the one-to-one. -one. If they were to do this course, what kind of things would they anticipate um, doing? And also what results could they anticipate getting? So that's a really good question. Um, so essentially, there's a number of things. One of the biggest issues and pain points that I come across with people is they go, I just haven't got the time yeah. to do it. Now, listen, if you listen to Elon Musk, if you listen to Richard Branson, you know, Alan Sugar, any of the big, the big hitters, should we say, they will always say you need to invest in yourself. You've got to read. If you can't read, because I'm just like, so I don't read much, but I watch videos. I, I ingest information. Um, one of our course contributors is a guy called Howard Berg. He's the world's fastest reader. He's a Guinness World Record holder. He's unbelievable. He's so cool. He's such a lovely guy as well. I'm hoping you might be able to do something with him at some point, Jill. He's yeah. a wonderful 
guy. Um, yeah. But it's all about learning and retaining information. So what I tried to do is create something that people could learn fast and apply fast. So it's all very practical. I'm a very practical person. Yeah, me too. You know, it's not theoretical, get your books out. It's video-based, instructional. And there's a bit of motivation in there as well. You know, mm. it's like, come on, you can achieve it. You can do it. Just spend 15 minutes a day. So if you do that 15 minutes a day, I can almost guarantee, I mean, listen, my first year I did 250,000 pounds in revenue through it. And that's, that's what we brought into the business, 250,000. We're now up to that's half a awesome. million a wow. year through it. And, and that's not me being super special. That's a normal person who tried something and built a methodology. So anybody, I would challenge anybody, of course it depends upon your product. If you're selling widgets at 99p, you've got to sell a lot of them. But whoever you want to connect with, whoever you want to build with, if you really want to build a, a, a brand that has weight and strength and credibility, not like this one hit wonder, get your, get your leads today. It's about building a sustainable, credible, long-term brand that enables you to be seen by your peers and your target audience. And they go, wow, I want you to work with me. So it builds your sales pipeline. So I would expect anybody doing this within 12 to 18 months, I want to see them on a six figure salary. So that's in their personal bank account. If they're a coach, if they're an individual, if they're a business, it could be far more because the amount and the scalability of what you can sell could be so much bigger. So I, I like to challenge people as well, Jill. And I, I say to him on, on the program, what sort of model do you work with in your business? So mm. are you doing one-to-one -one sessions? And if the answer is yes, well, have you considered what if we scaled you out from doing one-to-one -one sessions to doing group sessions? Mm. So all of a sudden, <clears throat> 10 hours, you, you know, 10 hours of cost, whatever that may be, let's say it's 10,000 pounds that somebody generates. What if you could do a thousand people in a month and you do it all online? So it's those questions of how can we push you and, and, and change your thinking and then give you a methodology and a structure around that to scale yourself beyond where you currently are. It's not about making money per se. It's about building your influence, which in turn builds your revenue streams. And of course, if you take money out of the equation, yeah. you know, it's, it's the work-life balance, isn't it? Because if you've built something like that, you've got yeah. the choice of whether to step back for a little bit because your brand will still be there. Your brand will be holding you exactly. if, when you want to come back a week or two weeks or a month later. Exactly. It's about um, waking up in the morning and just hearing that ping, ping, ping coming through <laughs> you turn on your emails. I remember um, back in 2012, I got a, a contract with the Football Association for an event at Wembley. It was a private event that I got to ticket. It was my first big break wow. um, I was terrified you know absolutely terrified and uh, I think we sold the best part of you know 40 odd thousand tickets in the space of six weeks through social media that's what we built which was great and it worked but the one thing I remember is is hearing the ping 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 of the emails and they were orders and I looked at the orders and it was like you know 35 pounds 35 pounds 35 pounds and actually you think it's not a lot of money but at the end of the day when you've had a hundred of them or yeah. 200 of them you go this is interesting. So for me now, and, and we were saying this before, before we started the call here today, um, you know, I've managed to book a couple of holidays this year. I would never, ever have been able to have freed myself up to go away on holiday running my own business as a consultant or a coach. Yeah. Um, but actually, I can go away whenever I want. I can work from the beach. I can work from the Antarctic if you want to go there. You can go You're anywhere. not going to be doing one of those videos that you see on YouTube that comes up going, would you like to work from the beach every day? Oh, 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 <laughs> like, you know no, what? I <laughs> I, believe I'm, so, I'm, I'm such a cynic with that stuff. Um, <laughs> I, I really am. Yet, yet I do understand the model. And, and you can, if you want the freedom, it's money isn't the prize. Time is the prize. Yes. Because you can be the wealthiest person in the graveyard but actually, you want to make sure that you have the time with your, your partner, your loved one, your kids, your family, your friends. You it's know, the only renewable, unrenewable resource that we have, isn't it? You can't, exactly. once we it's gone, have, it's gone. We don't have an infinite amount. We're, we're, we're here for a, we're a blink in the eye. And it's like, how quickly, you know, we're gone. You know, the world, will they remember your name? I heard that in, in Troy once, that movie with Brad Pitt that I absolutely loved. How will they remember my name, he said. They must yeah. remember my name. And, and actually, it's about a legacy. What legacy do you and I leave for those behind us? I've just, I've written this in my notes, darling. That's the question. One yeah. of the questions I ask everybody. It's true, <laughs> isn't it? It's because yeah. people, you know, if you're in your mid thirties, you're not generally thinking about legacy and what you're leaving behind. And then you hit a certain age and you're thinking about, well, what, you know, have I done enough? 
is there enough? And I think sometimes age is um, a state of mind. A friend of mine once said that she had a husband that was much older than her. So they both agreed to lock 10 years off their age and act as if they were 10 years younger and make all their planning on that basis. (laughs) You know, it's just a number. Um, So it's interesting how people's legacy changes as they get older. And some people in their, you know, 20s and 30s wouldn't even, what do you mean legacy? What are you talking about? No. I'm just earning as much money as I can so I can have some nice stuff. So I can, <laughs> you know, then I can have my nice life. And it's like, well, what about now? What about today? Oh. When was the last yeah. time? I've worked with clients. One guy, uh, I said, so, okay, why do you want to work with me as a business coach, my day job, apart from Collaboration Global, obviously. Sure. Um, and I said, what, what do you want to achieve from working with me? He said, well, I haven't had a holiday for eight years. Wow. Let's change that one now. Exactly. Wow. You know, and, within, and, and the reason he didn't like going away is because he said, I'm lying by the pool thinking of all the money I'm not earning because he was a one man band and he needed. So within nine months, we had two teams for him. Love they were on two projects and he went off to Tenerife and he proposed to his girlfriend. Uh, oh, and he said it was the best, you know, it's like his life was allowed to start because he'd given himself that little bit of space while having people around him that he could, he knew he liked, he trusted uh, and they were able to, to do the work that he'd, so he'd good. built the reputation and now he was handing it on to the next person. Yeah. So, and it's, it's the same thing about collaboration is that you have people around you and it sounds like you've got an amazing array of people that you've just kind of pulled together so my question to you now is how do you choose what what is it in your head and your heart that you kind of go "Mm, yeah they're the ones i mean how did you choose me i know we were introduced by mark yeah yeah sure and i've known mark a a relatively short space of time i know how i chose you but i'm just curious to see how you what what your thoughts were not necessarily about me but how do you choose people in general to go come on board come with me you know what it's such a good question and it's one that you learn through making loads of mistakes i've found <laughs> um but but I, you know i I've, I've been burnt i think everybody's been burnt in business you you make commercial decisions you you make relational decisions and they either work or they don't work and you you try to put things in place like you said at the beginning you put things in place to make sure that you have a great foundation moving forward but sometimes it doesn't work out and um one of the things that i've learned to get the right people and i've got a great team in london you know in our comms agency i've got eight people down in London who are phenomenal people that they're, they're such hard-working intelligent individuals um, one of the great things I've learned is always either hire partner or collaborate with people who are better than yourself yeah. I, I want them to be so much better than me listen I know what I do well but I also know what I don't do well I know what my non strengths are so I play to my strength which is video which is people which is entrepreneurialism and I know that as long as I've got a team behind me so my senior team for example we've we've got great investors in our board as well who've, who've financially invested so much into us to help us move forward I've got an incredible PR journalist who, who heads up our comms agency down in London he works with some phenomenal brands brilliant brands that we work with the global brands unbelievably talented and then i've got somebody who's a digital uh, specialist as well and and essentially anything that we want to implement a couple of weeks ago we had an idea that's now gone into development we think it's a it's a world first for what it is it's a, a fully scalable online business um, which will probably be going live within about eight months time we're so excited about it but the idea dropped into my head after the all of the initial deaths of covid and and it was a horrible horrible experience to see all these people losing their lives and you think, what about all the people left behind? You know, what, what memories do they have of those who've been taken so quickly? So we've actually developed a product to help um, create memories once you're gone. Uh, I can't say more than that at the moment, but it's, it's a really heartfelt, touching product. And I think it's going to make such a difference to so many people. But when that idea came, I looked at it and I went, I know where this needs to go. I know the concept. I know how to generate the revenue, mm. but I don't know how to piece this together. So all of a sudden is I'll pull in my specialist and now we're at the yeah. point whereby brief's gone in, I step back and they build it and then I'll step back in to build the brand when it's ready. So I think in answer to your question, I think knowing and finding people who are better at things, better doing things uh, than you is a crucial thing. Mm-hmm. Finding people who align on, on business ethics and you know all of the things that you personally stick to and hold to. Yep. If you find people like that, then you're in a really good space. Find people with a great mind who are aspirational, but balanced and grounded and can make something not just be a pipe dream, but they can earth it. And, mm-hmm. and listen, I could have I could have dreams all day long, me, Jill. I'm, I'm a oh, proper yeah. visionary. <laughs> but I need these people to go, feet on the floor, John. This is what we're going to execute on now. This is tomorrow. And I think really if you or your listeners, your watchers here, your viewers can find people 
who have the right mindset, who, who really catch on to what they're all about and they share the vision, you will do great things. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, thinking about it, it happened by accident rather than design, I think, with me. Um, because I uh, initially, when I first started a few years ago, I would be surrounding myself with people like me. Yeah, yeah. Got the, got the ideas. There you go. And got the, the finish line. Did, nobody was a finisher. Nobody was ready to go. And we were like, brilliant ideas. Yes, 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 yes. And, and no one to execute. And it's like, oh, we're going, we're going around in circles here. But bit yeah. by bit by bit, we kind of pulled those in by accident rather than design. So now I've got what I call my dream team around me. There you um, go. And they're amazing to, you know, um, every so often I go, what about that? No, not yet. <laughs> okay i'm gonna do that <laughs> but it's kind of so i'm not quite at the point where i can throw things at them and they'll go yep we've got that we'll run with that you know but every so often you, you you have the little gem and it's just um taking something and honing it and making it better and making it better and making it better and right. that's, that's what i like about what what you're doing is helping people to build their brand yes. build their brand because you can't build a brand unless you understand 100 percent what's inside your brand that's right. What your message is yeah. uh, and what, you, what your legacy is going to be. Because to me, exactly. it, it is all about a legacy building now. Um, exactly. And for me, I see, and everyone calls me Pollyanna. It's like, oh my God, you're, you're, such, a, you're such an optimist. I'm like, it's a bad thing. I'm like, but that's, that's, you know, somebody has to be an optimist in this world. And I see all the problems. I'm like, well, proper collaboration, not, not the doing collaboration, the being collaboration. Yes. The essence of what collaboration is can solve all of these problems. Yeah, it can. And people know how to be a good mum or a good dad or a good son or a good friend, but they don't know how to be good at collaboration. Yeah, and yeah. that's where I feel that coming together as a community, we have the culture within us of um, the, the values being human being first. We don't care what colour you are. We don't yeah. care what sex you are, what yeah. sexual orientation, you know, tall, yeah. short, fat, thin, don't care. Yeah. You're a human being first and we want to connect with you at a deeper level. And then we have love as our overarching superpower because if somebody were to have a go at you about something and you were triggered and you were in that world out there, you'd be like uh, aggressive in our world. And somebody says something and you're like, Oh, I got triggered by that. So why did they say that? And what's that about? Can you talk to me about that? Cause I really got upset by that and I don't yeah. understand. So you're exploring everything. There's no right or wrong. And generally people aren't having a go. They're saying, what I heard you say was this, is that right? Can you explain a bit more? So there isn't the angst and the upset and the yeah. um, gossip and the you know, diatribe yeah, yeah. that we get in the media, all of those kind of things are not part of our culture. So if, you, yeah. if you're a human being first and you have love as a superpower and collaboration is the tool that you use to enable everybody to do what they want and to build their legacy, yeah. then it's like, well, that that's ripples on a pond, surely. That's got to be yeah. flowing out and out and out. And then we can make an impact on politics or education or the monetary system. I, you know what? I, I completely agree with you. And, and do you know what? One of the, the most interesting things that you've just said there is this whole concept of, of love. And I, I want to just kind of focus on that for a second because a lot of people underestimate it. And our understanding of, of love is something that can be quite difficult as I mean, people watching this are probably from all over the world, Jill, but, but here in the UK, we, and, and in America, you have one word for love, but um, as a trained theologian, uh, cause obviously I used to be a, a vicar, as you know that, and there's a part of the story that nobody actually knows. Um, you <laughs> we'll know, come back to that. Go on, we'll make your point. <laughs> um, the, the point is, is, is in the original, uh, the Greek word where, where love comes from, there are four words for love and yeah. they mean four different things. And, and I think a lot of the time we can attribute love to a love of a partner or a love of a child or a love of a friend. But, you know, love is so much bigger than that. And it's actually a real powerful force to reckon with. And, and you know, as a, you know, a former minister, which I'm not anymore, you know, they would say that God is love. They would actually put God being the, the he is love. That's the power of love. So mm -hmm. I think there is a massive power in love. And, and I think we underestimate it. And um, it's not something fancy Nancy and something that we skip around and go, oh, we're all in love with each other. Mm -hmm. We have challenges to overcome. Um, we'll have disagreements. And, you know, I'll be honest with you, my um, growing up, I always used to run from conflict. And, and I always ran from it. And that was really weird, because I wanted to be a policeman. And, and that's all conflict. Every minute of the day is conflict. Yeah. Yeah. Um, violent conflict as well yeah. you know it's horrendous sometimes but actually you, you learn and, and one of the things that my partner Chloe she's amazing at this and she you know she works for local government and um, 
you know, the way to de-escalate people, the way to talk to people and, and actually always speak your mind in a way that is respectful. And, you know, and, and you just address the issues straight away. And I've learned so much from her and so much from my career before about just mm. address the issue and do it in a nice way, but address the issue. And then you can actually clear this path and you can plow forward and make some big change. So collaboration is key, but it's not going to be without its bumps in the road. Absolutely. Collaboration is about long-term sustainable relationships, which stand the course and test of time. And um, that's something that I would always advise people to do. Talk, be open, you know, get it out there and, and don't be afraid to, yeah. to talk about the and issue. I, I think you're right. I think most people, you know, a lot of people go, oh, I don't deal well with conflict. Nobody deals well with conflict. No, no, nobody wants hard. to get involved. But at the same time, when you are confronted by it, and I have in my past life as a housing officer for the local government, I've been, yeah. uh, you know, very violent people. Course, I've yeah. been, you know, somebody's drawn a knife on me and all sorts of things. Yeah. And I, when my kids were growing up and they used to have bullies at school and things, I said, okay, you'd be so nice, their ears will bleed. All right. You'd be so yeah, kind absolutely. to them. You'd be so nice because it disarms people. They can't keep the anger up. Yes. <laughs> when someone's going, yeah. I know, I hear what you're saying. Tell me some more. I really didn't mean to upset you. I'm so sorry. How yeah. you feel? And it's like, well, they can't. Yeah, but, and in the end, it's like, well, I'm not angry at you, but I just really feel. And then you get to the, and then you, you can find it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would I, agree with that. You, you're spot on right. And I think eventually when people do calm down, I mean, sometimes people, you know, have this inability to do it for, for a medical or a chemical imbalance reason and it can be very difficult but yeah. on the whole you're absolutely right people come down to that level and and you just talk it's like come on just sit down and and you know I'm the first person to apologize for things I always apologize I do, yeah. I'm apologizing all the time but you know it's it's good it's nice, <laughs> yeah it's nice just to be be like that and you know I have a very peaceful life now and and I've got the people around me that we have those conversations even this morning I was on a, an eight o'clock call with my team and I had some frustrations around some changes that needed to be made to our website because we've confidentially can't tell anyone this Joe can't tell anyone but we've just been accepted onto a, a major platform in in the US for for Influencer Academy so it's, it's a it. massive thing for us um but it's like, you know, all hands to the pump. We've got to make this work, that work, change this, change that. And for me, I'm impatient. It's like, oh, it's got to be done. And, and you just got to bring yourself down and go, take a breath, chill. You've got the team, the right team, same like mind. They get you, you work in the awesome. journey together, mm. you get there. But no, you're spot on right. Collaboration is key and yeah. underestimated. Totally. Totally. Oh, I'm glad somebody else hears me. This is what I liked when the very first time we got to speak. And I know Mark was like sitting there going, yeah, I knew you two would get along. Um, uh, is it that I, I mean, you kind of went, okay, fly away. What you're talking about. And everything that came out of your mouth, I'm like, Oh my God, he's saying my words. It's like, you'd listen to me somewhere else. And you said exactly. <laughs> like, Has he bugged me? What's going on? Because, and that's where I think our values and, you know, as I say, the human like, being first, the love yeah. uh, and collaboration, it just kind of resonated exactly. with us. Big time. So, I've oh, got to have the story about how did you become an ordained minister? <laughs> and when and why? And do you know what? I can see it almost though, because if you went into the police force to do good, yeah. that didn't yeah. fit right for you. Then, well, well, let's go to the other end of the You know, how else can I do good? So yeah, I guess yeah. It, it's, a, it's a real funny one. So, so essentially, I, I became quite religious at the age of 14, believe it or not. That's when I had my uh, conversion experience, shall we say. Born again. Um, I, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's what it was, or how I saw it. And um, you know, I, I think I went through a huge identity issue growing up. I've already touched on that, and and almost finding my identity in a faith um, it was something really important to me. You look at people now, like Jay Shetty, for example. That I don't know if you follow Jay or anybody yeah. else does, but Jay used to be a, a monk, and he found his identity in his religion, and now he, you know, he's very, very successful life coach and, and personality in the media mm. um it's a common thing and uh, essentially i walked that journey through and it was you know a, a very cool journey it taught me a lot of stuff good bad and the ugly mm. um and then obviously went into the police but when i came out of the police and went into the media i was still uh, religious um and uh, as a part of that journey i worked um in television for a, a massive global tv channel that happened to be christian based um, and that took me all over the world and that was quite an experience um, mm -hmm. and it was in that process that i actually became an ordained minister um and i did it with all sincerity you know i i yeah. believed it and, and followed it um i'm not in the same place now because i think i've i've just matured through certain bits and it just isn't as relevant to me anymore but the principles and a lot of the things that i learned have been really important and it's 
helped to ground me. I mean, a lot of biblical principles, believe it or not, the Jewish, the Christian, these are all about business. You know, yeah. Jewish community, they're some of the best business people on earth. Absolutely. My business partner is Jewish. You know, he's a, a member of the is, um, synagogue council and he is he's Jewish and he's phenomenal at business. Um, so, you know, I think it's very undervalued. Mm. But sometimes we can take value from all of these different experiences. And Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, all day minister, I could have, I could have married you. I could have done funerals and all sorts. I, I can't anymore. Um, yeah. But I, I could have then. I know. I know. It's just weird, isn't it? Those sorts of stories that help you become the rounded person that you are one day. And I, I totally understand that because I, I went through a similar experience um, when my daughter was born, having had no religious um, background whatsoever, apart from your C of E. What does that mean? I mean would, uh, put it on your certificate, your C of E. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Let's be labelled. Uh, and when my first daughter was born, I'm like, this is a miracle. I'm amazing. I've just created another life. I've got to thank someone for it. Who do I thank? Who do I go to to say, yeah, yeah. you know, thank you? Um, yeah. And obviously it's God. So I said, I want her christened. Um, and my yeah. husband being the clever man that he is said well I'm not being a hypocrite if you're going to get a christian we've got to go to church do we <laughs> really do we have to <laughs> but yeah he made me go to church and it was good and the guy that was the vicar there was you know Clive Slaughter all power to you um he's retired now but he was amazing and he was a businessman from South Africa had come over yep. and been ordained and he was phenomenal because he didn't stand up and preach at you he preached with you oh yeah. i was having an argument with my wife this morning da, 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 da. it's like whoa yeah. we had his whole life and now um having come away because he left and we kind of it, we moved house and the, the next church wasn't as good and it's not like clive and we left yeah. for all the wrong reasons but my faith stayed strong and sure. god has always put people of faith in my path ironically interesting very interesting and it's just um and i look at and then after that i got very heavily into personal development like you do yeah. you become a business coach and all it all kind of fits in plus the teaching before that. And you realize that a lot of personal development is all based on religion anyway, yeah. you know? Yeah. Not so much religion in the... Uh, I know what you mean. The, like practic the, the, the yeah. man-made version, yeah. <clears throat> but faith, you know? So it, whether, you're, whether you're a believer in Muhammad or Yahweh or whoever, God, yeah. Jesus, whoever, it's all about um, understanding who you are, connecting Agreed. to your spiritual self, that's and right. understanding that there are powers out there that we're bigger than we are and we're totally. not alone. We don't understand it all. Like yeah. we don't get it all. And I, I think we, I think naturally as human beings, we try and, and we can be so, we can be guilty of this control that we need to know what's going on everywhere at any one given time. We can't, what, what we need to understand, I think Jill, is that we, we're, we're driving our destiny and, and you know, we, th there are powers out there. We know that. And we know that there's, there's more going on out there, but ultimately, you know, you've got to make, you know, good grounded decisions based on great principles. A lot of those principles are religiously based, which is really bizarre, but it is. And you've just got to do the best you can with what you've got. And um, I think a lot of people look for their answers in religion. I certainly did. I found my answers, but that didn't mean it answered all my questions, just a portion of them. Um, and here we are now and, and moving forward. But at the age of 35, being a policeman, being a vicar, um, being a media personality, you know, seeing uh, seen the world all over, um, you know, you used to fly to Australia for meetings for like 24 hours. Can you believe that? Oh, it's crazy. Wow. But that's life. And all these things contribute to your journey as an individual in business and life, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, hopefully your, your thoughts around the environment would have stopped you doing that anyway <laughs> after a little well, while. I tell you, it's, it's, it's crazy because the amount of air miles, I think one year, I think I flew around Mars and back twice, I think British Airways air miles were. That's Oof. Crazy. And absolutely now, there's more education around the environment now. And obviously it changes how you view things. So um, with the world of digital, we don't have to be doing that anymore. And I think as well, I mean, it's a horrible thing to say this, but when you look at what's happened with COVID, it's been a tragedy with all the loss of life. But mm. when you look at how it's affected the environment, it's really caused us to sit up and go, wow, you know, the smog has cleared quite literally, literally from all the yeah. cities. And what can we now do to, to you know, create the long term, you know, the longevity of our planet? It's really helped us hit the reset button, I think. I, th I love it. I like somebody said um, it's Mother Nature sending us to our rooms and telling us to think about what we've done. I, I would agree. <laughs> I, I would agree. And, and it's even like in business. You look at all these uh, businesses down in London or Manchester, where I am, and, and Birmingham, all these 
big businesses with hundreds and hundreds of staff in their offices. Yeah. You don't actually need them all there. You know, you can work from home. You can save money. You can stop people traveling into work every day. And in turn, it creates a greater quality of life for them because they get to work from home. Some people like that. Some people don't. But it mm. does have an impact in so many different ways. So I firmly believe that in the long term, this will work for the good of something. I mean, it's terrible, the loss of life. And, and you know deeper sympathy to everybody who's lost somebody and I think we all know somebody who knows somebody who's gone mm. um, but especially up here where I am it's, it's terrible it's rife here at the moment but mm. you think about it and you go long term there's got to be something good we have to find a way to turn this around and make something positive from it we have to yeah absolutely I mean what, what would you what was your experience have you been locked down with your wife and just the two of you or yeah, so my partner and I, we, we've been in uh, lockdown um, for, you know, gosh, we were three, four months, but she continued to work because she's at, um, at the uh, civil servant local government. So she's been going in. Wow. Um, whereas for me, I, I work from home anyway. Um, mm. And, you know, I, I do my videos from home. I, I'm based here. This is this is my world. I don't travel much now at all anyway. So it's not been too bad, really. Um, yeah. But we've created lots of product while we've uh, been in lockdown. And business has actually grown for us. You know, we, we've noticed that a big transition online. And obviously, because our stuff, mm. our materials all online, people can go online and get it. And it's just there. It's a scalable model that is, you know, designed for an ever-changing world and so for us it's been absolutely fine yeah we, we've actually you know myself and Chloe we, we've we've actually got closer you know lockdown was designed to pull people apart and keep us separated but actually for us it brought us really close together um, you know we we had a great you know as a relationship we've grown and same in business have grown in the business relationships as well so it's kind of worked holistically really really well yeah ironically enough who would have thought exactly who, who would have thought it is interesting how if there were cracks in a relationship before then this would have oh. made everything worse and oh yeah me and yeah. my husband are the same it's very much when, whenever it's just us and there's no outside world we get on like a house on fire as soon as other people come in it's like oh did you say that did you do and it's that's that's when it kind of gets different but after sort of 36 years you you kind of get used to each other so we've had a lovely time um and he's been going backwards and forwards because he had to pivot his business from yeah. building stationery to schools and they all shut down to sure. selling PPE stuff. But that's the benefit of knowing good suppliers for over Absolutely. 30 years of business. Diversification. Um, I, I love, I would love to see how history is going to paint this because I, what I liked is at the beginning, everyone was coming together and it was natural collaboration and we all had the greater need and we all put others first. And you're now right. we're coming out of it. It's like, it's blame mm -hmm. here, blame there, fingers pointing, and you're not wearing a mask, and we don't have to wear a mask, and why should you? And it's like, oh, stop no. it, stop it. Just remember what it was like when you were I pulling agree. together. And I think the media, unfortunately, just stir the pot, stir the pot, and, you know, there's just no need for it. But it is what it is, and I guess we just have to take control of our environments, make them as best we can, and just contribute to society in the best possible way with the most integrity that we, we possibly can do, really. Don't know if there's anything more we could do. Oh, exactly. I mean, I think bringing people into the fold of Collaboration Global, it's very hard for people to be cynical in that space yeah. when, when you kind of, let's be positive, let's help each other. And how can I help you? That's the question that people come up with all the time. Is, what can I do? How can I help? And also what I like is when people are sort of jogging along and having a wind about it and you go, OK, can I challenge you? What have you yeah. done recently? And you're allowed to kind of, with a love, give them that yeah. little bit of tough love uh, yes. to, to push them forward. So moving forward then, you've got, a lovely life by the sounds of things you've got it made you know <laughs> what else do you possibly need maybe a puppy i don't know uh, what else oh, do you possibly <laughs> <laughs> but what's your ambition now where do you go from here do you know what it's uh, it's such a good question so i think really where where i'm at now personally I, I look at commercially and have i achieved what i wanted to achieve to date yes i'm happy with what i've achieved i think as an entrepreneur you always try to say that you've achieved it all, but actually you never do because there's always another thing, another idea. So, but what I've tried to do is focus and, and pull together maybe four or five of my projects to go, these are where I'm investing my time, making sure that my time is proportionate, is balanced, people can access my diary between these hours, that's it. Not mm -hmm. going to compromise on the, the nighttime working, on the weekend working anymore, been there, done it, not yeah. going to do it. So, I think for me now, it's all about building the Influencer Academy to get 
get people on board. I want 1,000 people this year onto the academy through my program to help them achieve their goals. This is about the legacy for me now. It's about investing in them and seeing them achieve great things, seeing them on social, being heightened as this personal brand, as their company brand, seeing them flourish with activity and, and generating the inquiries that they want so that they can go and do the same for someone else like I'm doing for them. Um, so I really want to scale this globally and we're in a really good place right now. Now, um, it's not exactly where I want it to be because it never will be, but we are exactly where we should be. We're ahead of the curve. Um, yeah. And then we've got three or four other projects coming off the back of this as well, um, which is going to be really exciting. So for me, it's about just continuing the growth of that business, investing time, effort and energy over the next year to see us reach that 1000 people, generating them the interest and the engagement that they want. And then we'll be on to the next thing. But on a personal note, I think it's all about being happy. And, and actually, you know, for years and years in my life, I really wasn't fulfilled and happy until, you know, um, sort of like last year, really, I, I found my happiness. And, and now that I've found my happiness, I don't want to let it go. Yeah. And, and the advice I would, I would share with anybody, regardless of your age, is, do you know what, don't lose track of the fact that happiness, people and time are the most important um, pieces of currency they are currency in life that that's all you've got to spend that's all you've got with you when you go to your grave is is the memories and the legacy that you leave with those who love you and those who you care about it's not about money money's important but it's not most important people are and i think if you can hold fast to that which i am doing you won't go wrong i'd sooner be in a cardboard box and happy than than have my lovely homes and and everything else i'd rather have that but thankfully i am happy so let's keep going and hopefully yeah i mean it's, it's, it's worse if you've got all the money and, and you're not happy it's just like what's the point exactly be in the oh, box and be happy it's it, so it's, many people like that though you know and, and the more i come across it you know I, some of the wealthiest people that i've come across and worked with are some of the most miserable oh. you know the relationships at home are miserable and it's like guys seriously get a grip get yeah. a grip you know it's not worth it it's really not worth it wealth comes in many different packages and money isn't Very one that um, when I was a kid, we were we weren't very well off. Uh, that's an understatement. Um, <laughs> we didn't have um, uh, we didn't have central heating. Uh, we didn't have a bathroom. We had an outside toilet, and we didn't even have hot water. Um, but we were wealthy because we had yeah. love. But, yeah, my my dad never gave us the illusion that there wasn't enough money to go around. It was like, yeah, we'll find a way. Yeah, we'll find a way. It was it was so, and I didn't even realize until I was older. And I would look back and go, well, we had meat on a Sunday and we'd have leftovers on a Monday, but we probably didn't, maybe sausages if we were lucky on a Thursday, but it was a vegetarian diet basically. Um, and my dad was a docker. So it, sometimes he was in work and a lot of the time he wasn't in work um, and there was no handouts or anything. It was, it was tough, but never did I feel poor in any way, shape or form. And it wasn't until I got to school and people were talking about going abroad for their holidays. And I'm like, you have a holiday? <laughs> so, you know, yeah. it was... So you kind of then realize that there's other things out there and other um, things to compare yourself to. I agree and, with you. Um, you never come off feeling good when you compare yourself to others. So just look around you and be grateful for the love that you've got in your life. And if you've got love, right. you've got wealth. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Wise words. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I was just thinking when, when you were talking about you know, being happy in your representation, going back to um, Influence Academy, how cool would it be for you if you had like a little kite mark uh, but every person that went through the academy had a little IA logo on their brand. So every time yeah. you saw someone's brand, you go, oh, they're one of mine. They're one of mine. <laughs> oh, you know, I'd love that. I just, cool, I just it? Yeah, it would. It would. And, you know, I think the reality is probably wouldn't happen, but I would love to see it. Who knows that big yeah. stamp of approval to say, you know, we've been through accreditation and all that. It would just be great. Yeah. And I think ultimately, though, it comes down to what happens, you know, we won't know what happens beyond the grave, so to speak, but, but I would love just to look down one day and go, all these people have fulfilled and have achieved their dreams. And maybe we can play a, a small, just a yeah. small part of that journey. And, and that would just be great for us. You know, I'd be so happy to, to know that one day. Well, maybe if they come through the Influence Academy, then they like the idea of Collaboration Global and we just look after them in the community afterwards. Well, that's, that's, that's what it's about, isn't it? You know, it's cool. not about, you know, you pick somebody up and then, you know, you, you have a transactional relationship and it's goodbye. Relationships should never be in my eyes transactional, no. you know, <clears throat> it's the long term. So, you know, come and transact great, but actually we're invested in you 
and, and anybody who comes through my programs, we're invested in you. It's the same with Collaboration Global. You're invested in them. And uh, it's important for people to understand the value that they have. And if we can show them how valued they are, then I think, uh, I think that's a winner. Yeah, absolutely. That's um, almost a stopping point. But let me just check. I have to go through my little notes here because I've been so interested in the conversation. I've not actually been looking at... <clears throat> okay. Oh, we've more or less covered it. That's good, isn't it? We, we're good at this. <laughs> so, yeah, fantastic. Um, so we've talked about your ambition going forward. We've talked about your legacy that you're leaving. We've talked about, I mean, before we kind of got going, were you aware of your natural ability to collaborate? I mean, I know you've spoken about yes. um, how you choose people that you see as better than you to come and support you That's and right. help you. Yeah. Um, was this kind of a, an awareness of you like I'm, I'm good at, I mean, cause what I found so far, this, this background behind my question is that people come and we talk about collaboration. They're like, yeah, of course you collaborate. Why, why wouldn't you? It's <laughs> obvious. And other people are like, oh no, I, I did that once. I got stung. I lost some money. I'm not going to do that again. And yep. it's this, this fear and competition versus mindset of abundance. So have you always had an abundant mindset? So you've gone, yeah, obviously let's bring people together. Were you the person at school that used to create all the parties and things or, or have you kind of had to learn how to come out the other end? Yeah, it's a really good question. I think to be truthful, my, my, natural, my natural self is about let's all work together and let's all be friends. It's quite an idealistic kind of um, attitude. me then. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, was, I, I grew up like that and um, I think there's a degree of innocence with that. And unfortunately, because I didn't put things in place to protect myself a little bit in life, <laughs> I got burnt and and people yeah. do sometimes take take advantage sadly um and it didn't didn't work out all the time but i think now i've come full circle on it and collaboration to me of course it's it feels natural to work together with people mm. um, and i also want everybody to benefit from that relationship there has to be something we learn from each other on the journey um, so the answer is I've always had a natural inclin inclination to, to bring people together and to work together. And I'll always entrepreneurially try and find a way to make sure that it works for everyone. Um, but again, for me, it's about making sure that there is a really solid group of people that you get on with, that you align with, that you've got you know, a, a great um, business mindset together and a great personal relationship together. And from there, you can change the world. You, you can change anything mm. with the right team, the right people and the right drive. And I've always believed that. And I'll hold to that to my dying day. You know, I think it's really important. Absolutely. And you know what? You have fun along the way because if you've oh, got all those things in place, it's, yeah. it's a dream. You just have yeah. such fun. And totally um, what's life if not to have fun? And as you, you say, it. be happy. Thank you, Jonathan. I'm going to leave it there, although I do feel there's so much more we could talk about. Um, uh, no, I know we'll do it again sometime. But I yes, really definitely. It. Thank you. Thank you so much for being uh, our guest today. Um, if people want to get hold of you, what's the easiest way for them to get hold of you? Well, Jill, uh, if they want to get hold of us, they can go to the Influencer Academy website, which is theinfluencerecad.com. So they can go check it out there. They can find me on LinkedIn or they can find us on Instagram or Facebook. Or they can just contact you because you know all about us as well. And you can send them to that <laughs> website if they want to look to know more. We do sort of webinars all the time. We give away lots of freebies and lots of bits of help and advice. But honestly, if you sat there watching this and you want to accelerate beyond where you are now, this is a great way to do it. And there's lots of little free programs I can put people on as well, Jill, to kind of give them a little taste, taste. of what they can mm. achieve. And that's, <clears throat> that's important. You know, it's not just about go and transact. Go and try it first, see how you get on and then take that next step up. So you can find me through all those different ways and means. But um, Jill, honestly, from me, I've just got to say it. Thank you so much. Thank you for the work you do. And please keep it up because it does make a difference. And uh, and it means a lot to me. We're in a, in a great partnership together. So thank yeah, you. thank you. I'm loving it. I'm having a great time. I can't <laughs> wait till we can actually get to see each other. And, you know, no, I, I, know. Feel like, I feel like we've already had a hug, but I, I need to have a hug and I need to meet your other half. Um, <laughs> and yeah, uh, to carry on the, the business relationship into a project of friendship yeah, so thank you for coming if you've enjoyed this podcast there there are more available in all the basic places you can find your podcast uh, but also if you fancy coming to meet some of our community you are more than welcome we have a meeting on the last tuesday of the month you can find us on um uh, eventbrite uh, and all through the website collaborationglobal.org um, we'd love to have you to come along and meet and maybe you'll meet jonathan there as well one day <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much for coming really appreciate it Take care.